Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dolls back for another new world video. Once again, it's a hidden technique, something that the people most of the time don't think about. But if you do it, you're gonna gain a lot of DPS and your group gonna do things better. This time, it's for the tank. Recently, I did two other one for the DPS. They just gained 45%. DPS alright so if you want to know how to gain 45% you're gonna have to go look the other guy that I just did before I'm gonna put the link into the description alright so for the tank there's a tech that is kind of insane uh, there's three ways to kind of do it and uh, the reality is your sword and shield is doing good DPS and you need to kind of keep it out because it give empower to your teammate because you have leadership on your sword and shield. So what is happening is usually you're gonna have an armor with your sword and shield because the armor is like the easiest weapon to use as a tank and it make it easier for your group to on the armor you're gonna have some rend you're gonna have some enfeebling you know you're gonna have some cc uh like everything you need is on the hammer like uh, everything and it even give fortify to your teammate if you use clear out like all your surrounding teammate gain fucking fortify it's insane but if you get really used to the raid you can realize that you don't need the hammer anymore because you don't you you can just go sword and shield and just hit non-stop and dodge the attack almost and the boss are hitting hard when to get empower but when you have good dps uh the boss are listen are hitting less hard because the dps are gonna destroy like the ads and stuff like that and the boss are not gonna get empower that much and stuff like that so i'm gonna show you what i did into this video this one i used the hatchet with a diamond with my sword and shield it was not too bad uh, i feel like it's maybe not the most optimized way to do more dps but you're gonna do more dps than with the hammer for sure and uh, you know it worked pretty well as you can see into the the, the video that i I'm showing right now it's working good it's possible to just face tank the boss almost the whole time uh, the, the hatchet is doing amazing for some reason but this is not my main trick right now the sword and shield hatchet is an amazing build and you're gonna be able to use it into the tree tree bus it worked and I did it and it, it, it worked good all right but uh, the angry art you know, uh, you s how to say that? Uh, you still want to use your soil and shit more because what I think is when you put out the hatchet and you do as much as you can, you're still a tank with 250 con in AV armor. So I'm pretty sure that if you keep your sword and shield out and you're just hitting with your sword and shield, you're gonna do more DPS than if you pull the, the hatchet. So if you use the hatchet, every time you're gonna pull it, it's by doing, you're gonna do Berserker. Uh, you're gonna do your light attack into a combo with the raging torrent and the uh, hatchet throw and then you're gonna switch back to sword and shield but the reality is you can do 15 percent more dps on target with bleed if you have a finisher as a secondary weapon and the rapier the finisher is a really good tank weapon like i tanked a lot with the rapier in the past mostly the dungeon death and to the dungeon uh, dynasty everywhere where there was some corrupted i did tank with the rapier and it worked well but right now i'm not telling you to use the rapier to tank yes you're gonna have the repost that you can have a piece with Sundering repose on one of your piece and it's a big ran so you don't need the hammer to put the ran anymore well you're gonna have evade evade is gonna save your life flesh you gonna help you to reposition yourself when you need to a bit of movement it's not bad as a tank and you're gonna just mainly use your sword and shield so you're gonna benefit of the 15 percent of the finisher but on the sword and shield for the tanks so 
Yes, there's an artifact for tank, guys. Uh, so you see, there, w there is no artifact for tank when you think about it, the weapon and, and stuff, like... Most of the people don't know what, what to use, so they put like Serenity, but you know Serenity is more like a DPS weapon, stuff like that. But, if you have a good SNS and a Rapier as a secondary, you're gonna hit hard and you're gonna be able to just keep tanking and you're gonna be able to keep giving the leadership to your teammates. So, this is kinda crazy, seriously, when you think about that. And then... This is the tech for when you are fighting the Angry Earth, alright? But you need to realize that there's a couple different type of mob and the Sword and Shield, like... If you take the Corrupted as example, they are not weak to the Light Attack, they are weak to the EV Attack of the Sword and Shield. So you can play EV Attack mostly and you're gonna be fine. But uh, if you want to play with the Light Attack, you have a Carnelian and they are not weak to it, so... You're gonna put a jam into your weapon, and then there's a, a item called the stopwatch. The stopwatch is an amulet. When you put it, you you don't need a carnelian anymore to taunt the 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 mob. It, maybe it's broken and it don't work. I, I think they fixed it, but yeah, like uh, I know during the moment it was not working. But this, the stopwatch amulet. Like, let's take, you want to use the blunderbuss as example, with the fire gem into it, and the sword and shield, then, you, yeah, this, this amulet gonna be nice, because you're gonna have a fire gem in your blunderbuss, and it's gonna work good against the angry earth, or like, like, you see, whatever, if you use, like, a... If the weapon, or your, like, if you do sword and shield and a hammer, as, as example, uh, and you're fighting Angry Earth, you can put a ruby into your hammer and then have the stopwatch. And you're gonna do more DPS than just by having a hammer. So, there's some small stuff like that. It's more like mid-maxing and it's some stuff that you don't really need. But, that you still come on the back channel just to get because one day you're gonna get some top 1 leaderboard for sure by applying those stuff. And you, you are not gonna waste four hours of your life into every fucking raid you're gonna do because you're gonna be able to recognize the group when they throw to like when I get into a group I just walk around and look the the weapon of the people and I know if they are throwing or not like the dude is having a spear. And he don't have a ruby into, into his spear. Okay, this dude is a bad DPS. Okay, uh, the, 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 the healer have a flail instead of having a VG. Ah, uh, there's some good chance that he's not good. And even if he's good, he's gonna throw because we need the VG into the, this raid. I like the flail, it's just that in this raid, the VG just performed better. It's just like... How it is, I can take more time to explain it if you want. I can make a video about it, like mostly about why you should use the VG into the dungeon, uh, mostly into the raid because there's some dungeon that you can use the, the flare. Like it's mostly only for Tempest. I think Tempest is probably the only dungeon that you can run a flare as either. But this is a thinking video, so. Let's speak about tanking. So yeah, uh, the rapier have a lot of good ability, uh, and it's good. Like the repost is a ton, so you can use it to taunt. You're never gonna lose the aggro if you have the sword and shield and the rapier, and you you never gonna have to put it out if you're gonna enough. Like uh, as you can see, I just did it with the hatchet, so that means you can do it with whatever almost like. You're just there, face tanking with the rapier, you pull some repost. When you, like, you better just use the sword and shield. You, like, just put a repost or something when you really need it and you think you're in trouble. But I don't think you're even gonna need it. Because this raid, as a tank, is easy. Like, on, the, on some other road, it can be a bit harder. Like, if you are a healer, the main healer, and you cleanse the tank, stuff like that, it get harder. But as a tank, if you are doing the right thing, if you are looking, watching my guide, you don't even need to have like the perfect build and you're gonna be able to pass it easy. This, just easy. 
So yeah, this is far enough for the video. Thanks for supporting this channel. I wish you guys a good day. Ciao.